Hello everyone, uh, I am Padmalochan and today we are here to discuss on uh, how to create uh, ASP.NET MVC application using Backbone. So we would be mainly learning about uh, Backbone.js, how we can use Backbone.js in our uh, web application and we will be covering up uh, the basic code uh, which are required uh, in server side using ASP.NET MVC. Okay. So uh, let's get started. But before starting on to that, uh, this is a short introduction about me. I am Padmalochan Maharana. I am working as a web developer at Mindfire Solutions. And currently I am having uh, 2.9 years of experience. Uh, I have worked with uh, ASP.NET MVC 4.0 and C Sharp Entity Framework, uh, WCF uh, and having good knowledge on uh, client side, JavaScript, jQuery, HTML5 and CSS3. But uh, I'm a specialist in Backbone JS, and I think this is the main agenda for today, which we'll be discussing. And currently, I'm having three certification: that is MCTA 70515, uh, developing uh, ASP.NET MVC for applications, and 70486, that's uh, ASP.NET MVC for web application, as well as uh, 70480, specialist certification in MVC5 with uh, JavaScript and CSS3. Okay. So let's get started with this. So this would be our uh, today's main agenda, uh, which we would be discussing. Like why should we use Backbone? Uh, what is the need of using our Backbone in your application? And uh, a basic uh, quick review of Backbone, like what it is, what things are present in there. Uh, how you, uh, what's the preparing server side code for this one? So we will be using ASP.NET MVC for uh, preparing our server side code. How you can uh, get data efficiently from your server side to the client uh, for using it in Backbone. Okay, uh, what is the view or like what is model in that? What's collection? What different things are present in Backbone? Okay, templating, client side templating. How can you uh, build your views or uh, your HTML with using a template engine? Okay, as well as we'll be creating a, a sample application from scratch. Okay. Uh, these uh, things uh, are uh, required, these are the prerequisites uh, before you go into this backbone. I think basics of JavaScript and jQuery is required along with uh, HTML5 and CSS and uh, web programming knowledge. And uh, you also need to require use uh, some tools like Firebug and WebKit for debugging your application so that you could uh, uh, debug and find on the errors and how the things work. So these things are basic knowledge of these are required. And uh, for using Backbone, uh, two dependencies are there. One is underscore. The reason why unders uh, of using underscore is uh, Backbone doesn't have its own uh, rendering engine. So uh, you can say the template one. So uh, for that, it uses underscore. And you can use uh, jQuery or Zepto. It's an alternative, OK? So. Before moving on to uh, Backbone JS, I would just like to uh, discuss one thing about uh, SPA. Like, uh, what's a SPA? You know, the single page application. So, uh, before going on to uh, further, uh, if you look at the history of uh, this web application, you know, earlier it was uh, just a uh, simple static HTML pages were there in early 90s and all. After that, the concept of server-side code came in, like Java, uh, I mean, I'm, uh, ASP.NET, and all where uh, you could you would be writing the server-side code, and it would be rendering it in a browser. And for each of this click, it would uh, come, and it would be round-tripping and going on to this uh, user submits and going on to that. So, and after that, uh, some concepts of like uh, JavaScript and jQuery come in, like uh, executing your code in JavaScript side. So these pictures came in. After that, uh, majority of the code has been transferred to uh, client side. You know, So in the SPAs, you can see, I can say that majority of code is written in a client side. Earlier, when a user clicks in a button for each of the submit one, it would go and again come back. So round tripping kind of thing could occur, but uh, it's uh, not happening in right now. So what I can in short say that it's uh, it's not a concrete definition, but uh, it's uh, just a concept. A very simple example I can show you is uh, uh, Gmail or uh, Facebook or Twitter. These uh, all are the spas are there. So it's a single page application. For example, we could look at this one. 
So you can see this is a Gmail and all. So on each click of the Gmail, when I go to this, uh, each tab, when I select this different tab, you can see uh, this request are made, it's a post or a get request, okay? This whole page is not loaded in there. If you open this one, you can see this post or get request, multiple EJAX call are being made, but this whole page is not being, uh, I mean, uh, rendered or replaced, okay? Just a part of this one is replaced. So it's a very uh, common um, example of a spa, which you can have a look at this one. If you go into this net network traffic, you can look that various Ajax call are being made. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, place where uh, all of this various JS comes into the package, like uh, this knockout is there, Angular is there, Backbone is there, Ember JS is there. So various JS are uh, present in the market. So what it does, it's, uh, it's basically like managing your code in this client side. So Backbone, what it does is create a structure for your application, okay, which you could use uh, for maintaining your client, uh, maintaining your code in client side, okay? So what's the advantage of SPA? As I said, there is no round tripping and it loads all of the resource at one go. Uh, when you call on this one at a single page only, it could calling your all JavaScript or all CSS and everything at one go, okay? Uh, as I said, there is an, uh, it's just a concept. Uh, there is no proper definition for this one, okay? If you need to build your uh, application where uh, there is a rich user experience or uh, a highly uh, interactive uh, client side, so you, that's the concept of SPA, okay? The lat latency is also reduced and the performance wise, it uh, gives a good performance to the user. Okay, this is because it's loading all of this JS and client side and it's um, rendering at a go as well as on each click, it's not uh, round tripping this one. So performance is increased a lot in this case. So, but uh, as we, as a web developer, we know that everything we do is a trade off. Okay, so SPA also comes in challenges with this one. The uh, search engine optimization is a problem like uh, when the Google bots they check into your site, you know, they first when they load, it would be just a blank page, okay? So uh, your page uh, for Google, um, indexing this one, it, it's not good. So I think there are uh, some tools or various mechanisms to do this one, but it's not a straight away, okay? And uh, therefore, uh, it's a new concept, so there is a lack of tooling and experience uh, in this one. I, I personally, I feel that there's not much tools or which a user or a developer can use for building up a, f a spa. I think it would be coming in with time, but it's a new concept as well as it needs to be working in different browser. For example, this i8 and i6, these older browser are there which uh, lacks in this support. So you need to check in the compatibility with different browser, okay? So let's get started with Backbone JS. So what is Backbone JS? Uh, it's a simple definition that uh, I have taken it from uh, this site. So Backbone.js gives a structure to web application by providing models with key value binding and custom events, collection with rich API of enumerable function, view with declarative event handling and concept it all to your existing API over RESTful JSON interface. Yeah, simple, no. So let's go into this, what it's saying is it it's, uh, creates a structure to your application by providing different model or collection or view uh, which works over RESTful APIs, okay? So uh, this is the site which you can, uh, which uh, is the main, uh, I have referred it from here. You can see this is backbone.js site, okay? So all of these elements are present in there, uh, which you, you could uh, refer it, all of this model and collection and all. We would come into this one, what is model and what is collection. But this is the uh, definition which is uh, present in this backbone inside, okay? So why it is uh, need to use uh, a backbone, okay? It encourages you to abstract your data model into your DOM manipulation interview and binding using together. So what happens is, let me just show you a quick demo in there. Yeah. So this is a sample application which uh, which we will be creating. So over here you can see uh, it's having a list of name and uh, when I click on this one, it shows onto the details of the user. When I click onto this new person, I can type it Steve, Adam. Okay, I can 
steve at the rate gmail dot com and just save it. So it would be updating my list. Okay, I can also edit onto this uh, existing ones. It would would be moody and save. So uh, it's you can see it doesn't reloads onto the page, but uh, it just updates it using AJAX call. So if you press F12 and see in this network latency, you can just check out for each of this thing which I'm updating this one. It's calling a put post or delete method you can say okay so everything that's happening in here it's happening in this client side okay so uh, nothing is going up the whole page is not being loaded as it was happening earlier uh, using any of this uh, web uh, like asp.net mvc earlier times okay so the need of uh, a backbone uh, what is a when you are uh, building a simple uh, complex structure uh, in uh, in your browser for example that gmail all of this uh, composing mail uh, flowing on to this one uh, checking your existing mail or creating on this one this you, if you're creating a complex ui in the client side you need some kind of uh, uh, what i can say is a structure for creating that okay so i think that is the uh, time where backbone comes into the picture it organizes your code okay uh, in simple ways, I can say that yes, you can do it using jQuery like dollar dot this dot find dot parent dot parent, and getting onto this value for each of this click, you could define something. But managing the code becomes very much difficult using jQuery. Okay, you could bind each of these events for this one. You could on click event on selecting event you could define, but managing your code would become a very much hectic. Okay, because uh, this is the uh, place where a backbone organizes your code okay if you are uh, planning to something to build uh, where the ui regularly changes display does not go to the server side to the get entire new page then probably you will need something like backbone js okay so as i said it provides a structure to your client side application so i think uh, uh, this is you can see a very uh, a picture like uh, before what uh, it looked like uh, without using backbone it just uses jquery and this application it uh, it uses backbone so the code is much more structured and it looks pretty much organized in there okay okay so this is the architecture of uh, backbone js as you can see at the uh, front end it's using backbone like which is running in your browser uh, uh, native browser and uh, at the back end uh, you could it uses backbone uh, i mean it uses rest api in the back end processing okay so uh, this uh, mainly backbone js has four things one is routers second is model third is collection and views router is uh, uh, mainly it uh, performs the routing kind of thing for example in here you can see uh, when I would be clicking on this mail so this URL over there it uh, changes to inbox when I send to this draft it uh, it changes it to draft so all of this mapping kind of thing like for which URL which page needs to be load this concept is known as routing that can be done using backbone collection is uh, models next moving on to model model is nothing but uh, it's a representation of each data like uh, what it's look like for each of the row and collection is nothing but uh, uh, it's a collection of model or a list of model view uh, is uh, something which we are showing in an html or uh, which handles all of this uh, click events or rendering kind of thing which happens that it's done by a view so as i said uh, the advantage of using backbone is it's high it's fast it's interactable and it's scalable like as the number of user grow your application uh, gives a good uh, uh, performance uh, according to the num growing number of user okay but uh, there are some cons into this as well that is a search engine optimization problem uh, it's a bit difficult to test as well as the security issues are there so while implementing that uh, you need to keep in mind all of the security problem because uh, in this app when you press in f12 in there uh, for example you can see you can see all of the data which is going in there in the response what it's that so for uh, a user could easily view in that so you need to keep in mind 
you can prevent this one and uh, there are uh, some alternatives to this but you need to keep in mind the security issue as well in there okay so uh, what is model uh, model are the heart of any javascript application it contains interactive data as well as large part of logic surrounding it conversion validation computation property and access control okay so just uh, let's have a look into our code so this is a, a models which look like i have uh, uh, extended this one that is uh, backbone.model.extend you can define in all of these properties which are there which would be having a default value you can define a url in there as well as with id attribute in this but uh, this is the way which you define a model okay all of the different properties are present in there you can just uh, check out in backbone.js in model section okay this is the uh, main definition of this one okay so through this model only uh, you could communicate uh, it through views where uh, you can uh, pass in the values and uh, handle all of these events in the in the view okay these are the main life cycle of this one uh, there are uh, attributes uh, uh, various attributes present in there one is their getter and setter method where you could uh, if you want to read a value you can use get when you want to set a value you can uh, do a set so let's have an uh, a demo of this one so i would be declaring where model is equal to new backbone model okay i could define in the default value suppose i'm defining it uh, as id as 1 and name as Mindfire. Okay, so it uh, it uh, returns me an undefined, so that absolutely fine. If I'd be doing model dot get, what is the ID? It would be giving me the result as one, and if I'd be doing what is the name, it would be getting me Mindfire. Okay, I could also set in there, for example. Uh, dot model dot set it would be place to India okay so it returns a backbone model and uh, after that you can check in the value by getting the place to India okay so this is the way which you can set or uh, uh, get value using a backbone model okay and uh, there are various events to this one for example you can uh, save a value by using a save you can delete a value by using a destroy you can fetch it from a server side by using fetch but for that you need a url for the setting a url for example you can see now over here i have defined a url so when you fetch this one or you delete this one or you update an existing one so using this url only it would be uh, hitting the particular uh, request in the user okay uh, validate methods are there so various methods are uh, uh, present in there which uh, you could use according to your requirement so the default method is there the initialize method is there and one more thing so what is the difference between a backbone model versus backbone dot model dot extend uh, simple way if I can uh, uh, quote it this one for example if you need a glass of water so I will be giving you a glass of water but instead if you s require that uh, you need a glass of water with lemon and with sugar in it so you can yourself add this one and use it so that is the main concept backbone dot model would be giving you uh, the basic things which you uh, want uh, setting up of a model and getting of a model but some for example in extent you need to write your own custom logic and your own methods for this one we, so it would be extending on for this existing model one okay uh, and in your project you would be basically mainly using this backbone dot extend you could define your own methods you can write your own logic into this one and uh, use uh, wherever it's required okay and it's having save fetch and destroy method for synchronizing it with the server so collection collection are nothing but a 
list of uh, uh, models okay you can uh, it when you fetch this one it would be uh, fetching you a list of model which uh, comes in from the server you can create them and uh, save them back it's just like an array like object okay views so views are uh, the general idea is to organize your interface into logical views backed by model and of which you can update independently when the model changes without having to redraw into the page okay so for example in here for the code which we are writing this is for uh, each of this uh, one which we have written for example this list of name each of them is a view okay which which is using a model to display the data and each of this list of this uh, uh, view is using a collection okay and the uh, details of the user which are shown in over here it's an another view which uh, is simply displaying a model of each user which is selected in the left hand side list okay uh, you can define in an event in the view for example when i click in this one it uh, show me the user detail or uh, if i click on another user it shows it detail i can save this one i can uh, delete this one so all of this uh, events for each uh, view you can define inside it okay so it handles uh, a model event as well as dom event all the view has associated l property uh, which uh, for example uh, for each view it's have an l property which is uh, uh, it's equivalent to using dollar dot this of element in jquery which we use okay we would be uh, coming into this one when we look into this uh, a demo okay it renders the ui as you uh, fit in this one so for example uh, when you change the uh, template in this one so it would be rendering in as you are uh, giving uh, the template in there so it easily changes your ui and renders the ui uh, when you render it okay so declarative syntax to register handler for dom events okay. so moving forward to this one let's uh, first have a uh, look into how you can set up your server side code for example you can see i'm having a controller and each of this uh, it's having a method that is a person so the action name is set to as a person and each of them it's having a different http verb for example it's having a get it's having a put post and delete so whenever you are uh, getting it from server fetching data from the server it would be calling a get method but the url would be remaining the same for example over here it would be home slash person and when you call a get it would be getting the data when you call a put method post method that's uh, you want to create a new entry it would be calling post input it would when you need to update this one an entry it would be returning your put method and when you want to delete this one it would be calling http delete so basically backbone you know works in uh, restful api so you need to just uh, instead of using this uh, uh, controller now web api concept is also there you can uh, you can create your own web api and just use this one which would be giving you da json data and you could parse and use it in your backbone model or collection okay so uh templating i think before moving on to this one uh, let's have a look into uh, our js side so as i discuss about this model you can see in, uh, over here i have defined a backbone.model.extend i am uh, providing the default value for this one first name last name and uh, the city for this and initialize so what is the use of this one is for example uh, when you are uh, when you want that for a, okay so when my first name is coming as null i want to show a user a default value as a, um, any name or for example when the company name is coming as a null you want to set the value as some company name okay so this is a place where you could do that in initialize you could do that and defaults is one when you are setting a default value if uh, if that uh, attribute is not present in there okay so this would be a uh, my model and this would be my collection which is in turn using this uh, address book dot personal model okay so when i initialize i uh, in this i am calling this dot fetch so what it would do it would calling it would be uh, getting called home slash person slash get method so it would be giving me a list of model in there okay so it would be uh, keeping in address book dot person method so now i have defined my model and now i have defined my collection so now it's time to define a view okay and uh, in the view over here you can see 
I am using a template, right? So what is this template? In this index dot uh, CSS HTML, you can see it. Our I am having a script tag. That's basically a uh, type equal to text slash HTML. So uh, I am having currently four templates kind of thing. Okay. So this this is the sample which we are trying to create. So the right hand side you can see it's a person form template okay which uh, shows the user details of this one and at the left hand side each of this is a person item template okay and this whole is a person list okay so this overview i have kept it in a main container right so let's again go into our code so over here you can see this is my uh, main container under which i'm keeping all of this content this is the empty one which I am showing when no user has been selected and you can see in over here is the person item template that's simply an uh, anchor tag that uses the first name and the last name okay and this is the uh, template person form template when a user clicks onto this one uh, all of the details of the user are shown so over here you can see I'm just passing on to this uh, value and uh, first name and I'm sh uh, showing it in this way the reason why it's uh, in uh, within this uh, double uh, braces because I have defined in the template for this one. Now let's go and look at what is template kind of thing. So currently I'm using uh, underscore js dot for templating. Okay, it's a client side templating. Templating happens in view in a render method. Okay, it's a dynamically markup from a template from some data. As I said earlier, that Backbone doesn't have its own templating engine. That is why it uses underscore. And these are the main tags for uh, using uh, underscore template. If you use this tag, it uh, executes the binary code. Uh, for the second one, it's uh, used to evaluate an expression and render the result in inline. And the third one is it's used to evaluate an expression and render HTML in and uh, uh, in run uh, in re result inline. Okay now but i'm using this one so the reason is why in this j side if you go at the top above i have defined the template setting so for example you could define your own setting okay for this one it would be giving me a name and for this uh, colon slash percentile it would be executing my code so this is the main advantage of using this one you can also uh, define your own custom type which you want to define for example over in there i want to use three curly braces for uh, a value type or i want to use that for executing the code you could easily do that so in index.cs for example i could I, if i want to execute a code over here what do i would do i would just uh, type in braces and it will be two percent answer th under that i would be I can execute the code. So the advantage of this one is, for example, uh, if you need uh, to show a custom uh, user type of this one, so it would be var first name, var name equal to first name, plus Minifier. Okay, so now instead of using this first name, you could just replace your name over here, and it would be displaying the first name plus that minifier. Or you could also define in your if statement if you want to execute some code, or if you don't want to uh, show some property or suppose first name according to a user, you can do that by using if name is equal to equal to uh, this. Don't show in this address one. So th this is the main advantage of this one. In the template also, you can execute a code. That's the main advantage of this. Let me delete this one. Okay. So this is the basic uh, template kind of thing which we are using. Uh, and one more thing is that it's not only with Backbone. For the example, if you are using just jQuery and you are uh, using that normal HTML which we use, instead of that, you could easily use a template and uh, the code is much more easier as well as uh, it's much more readable okay if you're not using backbone in jquery also you can use this template kind of thing okay so this is the uh, main concept of template let's move in forward with the view one so uh, in this base item view for example which i showed uh, in our uh, uh, demo in there yeah 
so these are the list this is the person item template i need to create in this one okay and it's an each is an li element which would be having an anchor tag and i want to define a click event on this one right for example when i click this one it would be showing me a contact okay so what i could do is just i would be defining an a tag element tag name sorry tag name tag name is uh, this default one is a div for example if you don't define any tag name it would be returning you a div element and if you define one you could define an li or any html tag it would be giving you an html tag using that one okay you can define in a tag name or a cl uh, tag class as well so it would be li sir class equal to nav or nag dev you can define anything and it would be taking that class okay and over here you can see i have defined a click event for this one so what's happening in over here when i when i click in this element it shows the details of this one okay and i have defined a method for this one that would be getting called for with select person yeah you can see in over here with that just uh, sending uh, using this uh, template uh, item template and it's sending a value in uh, the model in this one and is displaying in the user okay so moving on to this uh, main method this uh, main item view okay so over here you can see this is the main uh, item view which using l element this is the my main container under this only it would be having all of this views uh, which is being managed okay i am uh, i have defined the collection for this one it would be a person collection and i have defined uh, events for this for example when i when it's adding an element you want to call a method when it's deleting an element you want to call this method okay and uh, the click event is also defined for this one okay so just if you look at this code uh, i when i click on this one when i delete delete this and if i just go to network clear just delete this one you see it's calling a delete method and it's just uh, showing up to the selector user and it's just uh, ordering the list of item as well as it's updating the left hand side list okay so how it's doing that so let's uh, go into this code yeah so in this delete method which i have defined in here yeah i'm just calling this dot model dot destroy okay so in this way what it uh, what it happens it's call a it calls a method in the server side that would be calling a me home slash uh, person which would be an http delete one okay so it deletes the model in there so similar to this one uh, you can see i'm ha i'm defining an add event for this one so for example when i click a new person so it would be test person if i just give a company name mindfire okay so now when i click save it's uh, calling a post method that it uh, updates a new entry and it's also update a list in over here you can see and when i uh, so now you can see uh, it's calling a post method but the same when i click on the same next time so now it would be calling me a put method this is because it's updating that existing collection or specify uh, or a specified model you can say so why uh, for the first time it called a post and the next time it called a put what's the reason behind this one so the main reason uh, for this is the id attribute you can see which we had defined in our person model okay now over here the default uh, id which takes uh, over here is this id okay in this backbone model it's having a, a default one that's the id but you can specify your own for example i have specified as pgwit as my id attribute okay so just uh, let's have a look into this backbone collection in over here it's address book dot person collection sorry it would be my address book dot person one clear yeah so it's having uh, four elements and the model you can see it's having a list of model okay so this is the id one okay so this id i have sp specified so it's having a value when uh, when you are creating a new model at that time it doesn't have any id so it calls a post method 
next time when I do this one, but uh, when I call this one and in um, return, I'm just sending on, on the ID one. In the controller in over here, you can see this post method. I'm just returning a GUID, that is a P GUID, and it's updating the model. This is the reason why when the second time it's getting called, it's just uh, calls a post method because it contains an ID. Okay, this is the key concept why uh, I, when I, for first time I call in, it calls a put and the next time when I call in, it uh, sorry, or the first time when I called in, it calls a post method, the next time when it's having an ID, it calls a put method. Okay, so this ID attribute is the key concept. So, uh, the next uh, thing which we would cover is like the validation part. Okay, for example, you can see I'm having a validate method in over here. Uh, when uh, suppose I click on this new person I want to uh, currently I'm having a validation that it should uh, when I'm not entering a first name or last name it should uh, not submit it to server side okay it should not render that one so just let's clear just go to this network and over here as you can see when I click on this save it doesn't have a first name so I'm just uh, putting an alert that please specify a first name and please specify a last name you can see it's not being getting called so in this validate method i have written the logic okay you can put your own logic in this one you want to uh, um, uh, how you want to show the, the uh, user the error currently i'm just uh, doing an alert okay uh, this is the main when you return this one when you uh, when the length is greater than zero if you return a false that means it's perfectly valid other than that it would be not be submitting to the server side okay uh, the main concept uh, over uh, here is uh, that uh, so like uh, you uh, need to specify for each of the attribute. Uh, I think there are many ways which you can uh, do on a collection over the whole collection. But currently I am uh, doing in a specified model. And one more question like they ask is uh, some user ask how you can uh, imp while you are uh, importing this one when you are importing a model or uh, you are getting a list of a collection how you can validate this one there also a user can validate in the method using this only so it would be having an invalid model it won't be adding it to the collection okay uh, and you can see in over here the uh, the list which we are calling is in the in the sorted format okay when we uh, refresh this one it uh, doesn't uh, have in this shorted format. Let's let me refresh. It's loading. Yeah, now uh, it's in there. It's not being shorted. But when you edit this one, you can see when I save, yeah, this gets shorted. The reason uh, behind this is when I'm calling this one, I would be calling in a short method. You can see success. Yeah, this address book dot person dot sort. When I'm refreshing this one, I'm, I'm calling this sort method. And one, uh, the key concept for this one is you need to define a comparator attribute for this one. For example, in over here, you can see on this collection, I have defined that it returns, uh, it sorts according to the first name and then uh, plus the last name. Okay, you can uh, define your own comparator as well as you can have multiple comparator for each of this one. For example, you want to sort it by company name or you want to sort it by uh, address or something. You can have your own multiple sort kind of thing. Okay, multiple comparator inside a single collection. So this is the main concept and I think uh, for sorting over here. and. Uh, I think uh, this is the main concept this is a simple application that I created for uh, showing you all how we can add update and delete a collection in over uh, using this backbone JS okay so I think uh, uh, that's it uh, from my side which we had uh, today we have discussed all of the basics of backbone how we can create a model how we can create a collection how we can use a view as well as uh, what the are uh, the basics of required for setting up the server side code and this is a sample application which you can use for uh, create update and delete functionality okay so i think this would be uh, from my side uh, any questions no uh, thanks a lot uh, for uh, uh, watching and uh, if you uh, have a question please uh, email it to me and uh, this is our address so that's it from my side thanks a lot